Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. And my name is James Coburn, and the topic for today's uh, sort of data evaluation uh, grades, if you will, or just looking at how teams stacked up, is with the Miami Dolphins. And just to start out with the Miami Dolphins, I I didn't really like this class um, overall. I think there's a lot of things that they could have improved. But let's get started with Charles Harris, defensive end slash 3-4 outside linebacker from Missouri. Now, the first thing I want to show you is just his production. Production-wise, he's very good. He has very, very high solo tackle market share, uh, very high sack market share, and, and, extreme, and very, very high TFL or tackle for loss market share. He's got a good age. He is a good overall production for his strength of schedule which is probably the big reason why they took him is based on production only athleticism is where things fall apart now the athleticism I'm going to show you here is athleticism based on his pro day data and it improved like he doubled his pro day in terms of explosive testing uh, just for his size like it was that drastic of a difference and I can understand guys struggling at the combine a bit and then going to the pro day and improving a little bit but he like doubled his explosion testing so i'm a little skeptical of this but even if you go with his pro day numbers this is how he stacked up uh he had 81.03 in terms of explosiveness this is based on the pro day uh 42.20 in terms of speed for his size and 30.31 in terms of flexibility uh for his size that's not getting it done. He does have good explosiveness, and this is him compared to other similar types of athletes. Derek Burgess is probably the go-to example of a guy to say, oh, he's going to be successful because of Derek Burgess. Even though Derek Burgess is extremely more explosive. I mean, Burgess is 90-plus elite-level explosiveness, like Miles Garrett-level explosiveness for his size. Where Harris is not that. So I think Charles Harris will be a productive player for you guys. But when you really look at him overall and you look at his flexibility testing, there are no special uh, pass rushers with his flexibility testing. Even when you adjust for his pro day performance, there just isn't anybody out there that is an elite pass rusher with this flexibility testing. So I guess what I'm essentially saying when it comes to Harris is I think he will be a effective pass rusher, but I don't necessarily think you got a guy that's a special player uh, or a player that's going to be special long term, especially with some of the players that you had on the board like Jordan Willis and a few other guys that hit every single marker from production to athleticism marks. And then we get to the next guy on the list, and this is probably my favorite pick that they made. Well, pr probably my second favorite pick. And that's Raekwon McMillan. Uh, now, I'm not the biggest McMillan fan on film uh, during the year. But his production, he had 83.61 out of 100 in terms of solo tackle market share production, which is Pro Bowl level solo tackle market share production. He's a very, very young player. He had a 98.43 age score, one of the youngest linebackers to come out in the draft in the last uh, 20 plus years. And also very good production for his strength of schedule, obviously playing at Ohio State, which has had one of the toughest schedules in college football for the last four to five years around that time. His issues really boil down to athleticism. Uh, he has 60.06 .06 in terms of explosiveness, 82.80 in terms of speed for his size, which is his best mark, and 65.39 in terms of flexibility uh, for his size. He misses the mark when it comes to Pro Bowl level explosiveness, but I think he could be an outlier. And outliers are just guys that they're guys that hit every sort of thing but miss one thing. But there's so many other things that are positive in their profile that it kind of helps them to become a successful player. I think that could be the case with McMillan, even though he didn't hit the Pro Bowl level explosion number. I still think there's a chance that he could be a pro bowler based on his production and also based on his overall athleticism profile. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to hold that against him. I would just say I would temper my expectations and he's already a second round pick. So I think nope, we don't really need to temper our expectations because we already have a certain amount of expectations for that type of pick and I think he'll meet that expectation. Then we come to 
one of my least favorite players on film over the last two years at cornerback and uh, Cordrea Tankersley. Starting with production, he had 42.42 in terms of solo tackle market share and 59.55 in terms of uh, pass deflection market share, which doesn't include interceptions. It's purely pass breakups. And when you look at his production and you, and you just look at the chart here when it comes to his production, he has Pro Bowl level solo tackle market share, but he didn't hit Pro Bowl or all pro level pass deflection market share. And on top of that, he's very old. He had a 23.45 when it came to his to his age on draft day, meaning he'll be about 24, 24 years old when the season starts. And age-wise, he had a 17.37 age score, which is not getting it done when it comes to quality outcomes of that position. Uh, on top of his MSA rating, which is just his production for his schedule, was terrible. It wasn't even starter level. Then you come to athleticism. He tested kind of DJ Hayden-ish. Uh, he had a very good speed score. That's probably his best thing. He had 87.70 speed score. And flexibility-wise, he had a 60.52 in terms of flexibility score. So he has speed. He has flexibility. Not the best, not the most flexible guy. Could he become a starter? Based on the data that I have, guys at his age with his production profile, those guys don't usually become starters. But is he athletic enough? Does he have the sort of physical traits to become a starter? Sure. I just don't think he's going to be a great starter or a pro bowler or all pro guy. You're not getting a steal when it comes to Tankersley. You're just getting a, a, a guy that can play cornerback who may not become a starter long term. So uh, it could work out based on athleticism. But it also might not work out at all based on his production profile. So it's and and Grabby was one of the big things I, I didn't like about him on tape. Then we come to Isaac Asiata, Utah guard. I liked his film. I felt he was pretty solid when it came to film overall. In terms of athleticism, he was 63.60 in terms of explosiveness, 66.44 in terms of speed, and 66.72 in terms of flexibility. So he's not an elite athlete in any one offensive line metric he doesn't have one aspect of his athleticism that is just elite you know he's not elite explosive he's not elite fast he's not elite flexible he's just a good all-around athlete and his age also kind of caps his upside because he's 24.34 uh overall on draft day and you're looking for you're looking for most offensive linemen to be 23 and a half when they enter the draft or younger when you're talking about quality outcomes. All pro, pro bowl kind of guys. Those guys are usually 23 and a half or younger. So Asiad already has that ding against him. He has a ding against him when it comes to his overall athleticism not being elite in one area. And I think he can be a starter. I think he can be that type of guy for you. If you look at it from that way, they got decent value because he can become a star. Because most people don't get stars at that level. So, I think it's a decent pick from a perspective of getting a starter. But I think you could have done much better in terms of getting guards uh, at that at that position. Uh, guys that are more athletic or younger or just have more upside potential uh, and better film. You know, that's the other thing too. Uh, Isaiah Asiata was not this amazing guy on film in terms of a guard then we come to Davin Godshock's LSU defensive tackle another guy that's kind of like Charles Harris he's very similar to Charles Harris he's he's a young player when it comes to his production and just this is just him production wise he was 86.71 in terms of solo tackle market share uh, 86.43 in terms of sack market share and 68.82 in terms of TFL market share. That's not bad, guys. I mean, that's not bad production. And his overall strength of schedule adjusted production was also decent as well. Pretty much like Charles Harris. But they almost tested identically, very similar to each other in terms of athleticism compared to their peers. Devin Gottschalk's had a 65.38 explosion mark, a 29.87 speed mark, and a 24.05 flexibility mark. And just like Harris, his most his most prominent 
uh, aspect to look at from athleticism standpoint is his explosiveness, but the speed and the flexibility are not elite. And every single multiple all pro, multiple pro bowl defensive tackle had better speed, had better flexibility. And as much as the production is interesting when it comes to Devin Gottschalk's against the SEC competition, this ain't getting it done. You know, just because you have a guy who played SEC competition and was productive against SEC competition uh, doesn't mean that he's going to become this great player if he doesn't meet the athleticism thresholds. And I don't think that this is something that is really debatable. You know, um, I'm as pro production as anybody else, but. When you have somebody like Godshocks who doesn't have the athleticism marks of a special, special player, what else can you do? So this is probably a depth pick, realistically. I mean, this is what you're looking at, a guy that could be a backup, a guy that can do that sort of thing. But if you think that this is a, this is a steal or this is someone that you should be looking out for to to write a, a cool story about on ESPN or Sports Illustrated, it's not that. So that's that's only thing I would say about Godshock. So if you if you look at day three as well, let's get backups and special teamers, then that's exactly what you get in Devin Godshocks. And I don't like that mentality, but that's essentially what you get when you when you take a player like him. Uh, the next up, we get Vincent Taylor, and Vincent Taylor is a guy I actually like on film a decent bit. Production-wise, is, is decent. He was 73.36 in terms of solo tackle market share, 88.29 in terms of sack market share, and 84.25 in terms of uh, tackle for loss market share. Uh, the only thing that hurts him is age. Uh, he had a 42.11 age score. He, he's he's at least he's 23 years old at least at this point, and there just isn't he doesn't have elite athleticism to really make up for that uh, athleticism wise he was 58.20 in terms of explosiveness 62.16 in terms of speed at 63.52 in terms of uh, flexibility for his size those are all good marks it's, it's very Isaac Asiata really it's a, there's a pattern here I'm telling you there's a pattern here uh, he, he's a productive player and film wise I liked him I didn't love him though uh, he's he's a tough guy. He'll he's a very try hard guy. I think at best case scenario you got a starter here, a guy that can start and be a decent sort of guy from that perspective. But he'll never be a quality player. He'll never be an All Pro player, multiple All Pro player. He'll never be a multiple Pro Bowl player. That's just not in the cards when it comes to Vincent Taylor. If you look at it from the perspective of value, you got a starter in day three. That's that's good. That's good, but if you look at it from the perspective of better players on the board that you could have got that would have filled needs, you know, so, yeah, so that's another issue uh, in terms of uh, what they're looking at. And then, of course, last but not least, and this is my favorite-ish pick, uh, is Isaiah Ford, wide receiver out of Virginia Tech. Uh, the first thing you start with him is you, you look at his... Uh, production. He was 84.67 in terms of his uh, passing yardage market share, which is three-time All-Pro level. That's good. And then you look at his athleticism where things kind of get scary. He had 54.22 in terms of explosiveness, 18.21 in terms of speed, and 31.48 in terms of flexibility for his size. So the one thing I can say about Ford when it comes to his overall athleticism traits, he's explosive which is on film in terms of slants and those other sort of things. When he's exploding to the football, you see that on film. But he's not fast and he's not very flexible. He's kind of stiffish. Uh, a player similar to him, and this, this is where there's some hope, Bernard Berrien, is probably the closest example of a guy who had similar production, but Ford was actually more productive, and similar athleticism based on just Ford being similar to him but, but Ford being a little bit more explosive. But similar in terms of uh, Berrien was below average explosive, but that was his best overall trait. He was more explosive than he was fast and flexible, and that's the same thing with Ford. But bottom line, I think Isaiah Ford has the potential to be a starter for you guys. I like Ford on film. I think he's a decent all-around player, and production is there. So there, there's hope. There's hope here. 
I don't usually bet on wide receivers that don't do well in terms of speed and flexibility. Those two things are, are big things that I, I want at that position. But I think that there's a chance that Ford could be a starter. So essentially, you got three starters in day three. When you look at it that way, it's not that bad. But, but here's the bottom line when it comes to the Dolphins draft. I think the big athletic metrics that they favored was explosiveness. When you look at their entire draft class, the one thing that every single player had in common was explosiveness. Charles Harris, McMillan, Asiata, Godshocks, Taylor, Ford, all had above average explosiveness. The only guy who didn't was Tankersley, but he had above average speed and flexibility wasn't that great, which was the same as McMillan. So there's some patterns here. And when they made statements, you know, at least the rumors about the Dolphins was that they were trying to get more athletic. It kind of looks like they were, but they don't know how to judge athleticism, overall athleticism, which is a big thing because you know, you can look at any one metric and go, well, we got more athletic, but did you really get more athletic? Because the thing is, when it comes to overall athleticism, you didn't do too well in that department when it comes to this draft class, but you did get guys that have skill sets. So you had, you got guys that are explosive. That can be an advantage. You know, uh, you got guys that are fast and you got some, you didn't really get guys that are very flexible, but whatever. So you've got some things there to skill set wise that can work. It's just that they're not going to be dominant against every single player that they face. So I, again, I don't like doing grades on, on teams, but I think that the, that overall the Dolphins, they did okay when it came to this draft. Honestly, I see at least four or five starters here. And that's a lot better than most people could say, you know, in, in terms of uh, stuff. It's just they didn't get any high quality guys. And lots of depth, really, is all I can really say about this class.